so I got Busy Bug made into a plush. Look how cute. And then I got Clementine made. I don't know. Maybe I'm being picky, but I just... I don't like it that much. It's not what I envisioned, but it's still cute. Like, this is a cute little plush. Wow, now that I look at it, though, in the camera, I'm like, maybe it's not that bad. Drum roll, please. There we are. Hi everyone, welcome to my video. My name is Veronica Porlier. Today's video, I wanted to talk to you about my new plushies. I guess a little background on these little guys. So this is Busy Bug. If you've been following me for, I don't know, at least two years, I guess, you'll know who this is. This is Busy Bug. And this is my original creation that I, um, the little, so I painted Busy Bug a few years ago and I just like, fell in love with my little creation. It's such a simple like painting. So I did this like I was making a calendar. I don't know what it was about them, but I just started putting them on everything and like they became my logo, my shop logo. I have tons of sticker sheets, washi tape, you name it. I got it, Busy Bug is on it. And so I always, always, always wanted to make a plush of Busy Bug and I honestly had like no idea like how it would come out or anything like how to even make it come to life and stuff and so a few months ago I started the process of making Busy Bug into a plush. Look how cute she is. While I was making Busy Bug I created this other character who I really felt like a lot of people really liked her and so I was like maybe I should turn her into a plush too. So I also made Clementine. So I designed Clementine a few months ago, I think, and I decided to just kind of add her on while I was making Busy Bug, and so I turned them both into plush dolls. Now to the actual process. I really kind of wanted to share like the process and how what it was like making the plushes and kind of like I don't know, I guess a little bit more behind the scenes. I think one of the biggest questions people always ask when it comes to running a shop or a business or whatever, it's always like, where do you get things made or where do you get this manufactured? So there's some things that I'm okay with sharing with people. All I did was like send in the products and then they got made, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. But there's some things where you have to find manufacturers like overseas and that actually costs a lot of money to do trial and error. Um, to order from them and to have them ship it to you. Shipping isn't expensive. And so I think that's why sometimes people can feel a little bit more hesitant about sharing where they get things made because I did have to spend a lot of money to research essentially a manufacturer that I was happy with, the quality and whatever. So that being said, I wanted to kind of share maybe like the process of finding a manufacturer. I guess specifically I'm talking about my plushies today, but, and the process, but you can also kind of use this, at least the beginning part on how to find a manufacturer, if you're like interested in that, I guess. So oh, I wrote down some notes because I need to be able to keep myself on track. Otherwise I will be all over the place. I already tried recording this and I was like, what am I saying? So I'm also gonna try to talk in like me, perspective like my own not saying you because I think it's just gonna confuse me and I just need to like talk about what I went what I went through so I can explain this better to y'all so first step usually is that I already have a design drawn out an idea of what I want to be made whether it's sticker sheets washi tape die cut stickers um, my plushes like everything so usually at least you know obviously have an idea of what you want to make so that you know what next step you need to take and what kind of manufacturer you need to be looking for. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off first with stickers and die cut stickers and memo pads because I think those are the easiest to kind of do when you're dealing with American manufacturers. Um, and that's what most people I feel like start with when they use, are first starting to get into getting things manufactured. So before I get into the manufacturers, I first wanna talk about color profiles because you'll need to at least know this before you start sending things out to manufacturers. So color profiles, they are annoying. Most commonly, at least from what I know, and again, I guess disclaimer, I did not go to school for art. I went to school for psychology and anthropology. I didn't ever go to school for art. I've been running my shop for about 
three years now and it's totally just been like a learn as I go type thing. Like I just watched a lot of studio vlogs. I followed and supported people on Patreon to get kind of behind the scenes, see how they do stuff, like the process. And just from my own like trial and error, that's like how I've learned how to do things over these past three years. And it does take a lot of time and money to learn all this stuff. Um, so yeah, that's the extent of my knowledge, I guess, just as a disclaimer. I'm going to try to describe RGB and CMYK as simple as I can because I don't know a ton about it, but all I know is that if you want to have things made by manufacturers, almost always you will have to send it in a CMYK color profile. Otherwise, the colors will be way off and they will be ugly and you will be shocked by the colors and you don't ever want that to happen when you're getting things made because obviously like like you're paying money for that and you, want, you don't want to waste money. So I guess an easy description of RGB. RGB is mostly meant for um, on screen. So like your phones, your iPad, um, your laptop, that kind of stuff. It's not meant necessarily for like printing, I guess. Um, and it's still kind of like confusing to me because for the most part I draw in RGB. And because I always made stickers at home, I didn't have a problem printing. Like the colors always came out really vibrant and fine. So I figured like, oh, that's just, like, I didn't really get what color profile it had to do with anything, I guess. But when you start working with manufacturers, again, like they require CMYK. And so it was kind of like, what is that? Like, so yeah, RGB is mostly for screens. It's very vibrant and colorful and bright. Now CMYK, again, is for printing. And it just stands for, I think, cyan, cyan, blue, yellow, magenta, and black. And that's the colors spectrum that manufacturing printers can use, I guess. But CMYK will never look as vibrant or colorful or bright as RGB. It, it just, they won't ever look the same. So it's kind of sucky, I guess for me, especially because I really like bright and vibrant colors. And so I'm always like kind of like, man, like I just want it to be more vibrant and stuff, but it'll just never match. So also with CMYK, it's the closest to how it will print. So a lot of times it's recommended to just draw in CMYK. So on Procreate, you can change the color profile that you're drawing in so that you can choose either RGB or CMYK. So usually when I draw in CMYK on my iPad on, in Procreate, um, I pick the color profile. It says SWOP 2006 Coded 5 V2. I don't know what that means. That's the one that I pick. It seems to work fine. Different, you can also ask a manufacturer if they use a specific kind of CMYK color profile so that you can be sure to draw in that color profile. So yeah, so it's always probably best to draw in CMYK first before sending it out to a manufacturer. You can also edit it though. If you do draw it in RGB, you can go into Photoshop and edit it and switch the color profile to CMYK um, in Photoshop. We'll have to like probably edit the colors a bit. Honestly, it's just kind of annoying to do that. So I'm starting to just, I, if I know that I want something printed, I just draw it in CMYK first. My other biggest tip when it comes to CMYK is to save it as a PDF or a JPEG file. So I did this a lot and I only recently found out that you shouldn't save it as a PNG because that's apparently like a digital file type, like it'll switch it back to RGB. So for what, at least what I've been told, I don't know if this is true, but so I was told that if you, even if you, the color profile on Photoshop is in CMYK, if you save it as a PNG file, it'll convert back to RGB. It, I did that with my last manufacturer and my colors did not come out that great. I've also done it before and I didn't notice any difference in like the manufacturer, so, but I would still do it. So now, from now on, I am saving my photos in Photoshop as PDFs or JPEG if they are supposed to be in CMYK, just to be on the safe side. So to give an example of, I guess, art printing at home, RGB, and then printing through manufacturer, um, I printed this one through manufacturer and this one was printed at home. You can't tell that big of a difference on the screen because I feel like it brightens it up a little bit. But on this side, you can see how different, especially the reds and the yellows are. It just doesn't pop as much. The colors just aren't as vibrant, but I mean, in person you can like completely see the difference. Like they are totally different. And I wish the camera would like show you that. This is like the closest that 
you can see, but there's a huge difference. So yeah, I hope that made sense. I don't know if that was like kind of all over the place. So step three is finding a manufacturer. This is probably the most common question amongst artists is where do you get things made? So I'm kind of just gonna get like the easiest part out of the way, I guess, which is where to get like sticker sheets made, die cut stickers, or even like memo pads, thank you cards, stuff like that. And if you're around like the art community for long enough, I feel like you kind of like pick up here and there like where people get things made or if you watch studio vlogs or support people on Patreon, which also I have a Patreon and I do share where I get things manufactured sometimes. Well, for the most part, I do share where I get things manufactured and kind of behind the scenes of like the process of working with manufacturers and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, you can support me on Patreon. Some manufacturers that you can look into and I haven't used all of them, but just to name a few of different kinds of manufacturers, there's um, like companies like Sticker App, Sticker Ninja, Vinyl Disorder, I don't have a list, Jukebox, Moo, Rockin' Monkey, Cat Print. So that's like a few of the common ones that I've heard of. But that being said, you can always order, for the most part, I think for most companies, you can order a sample pack and they're usually pretty cheap or free and they'll send you a sample pack of their stickers or print type papers or memo pads or you can see the quality of their products to see if you like it if you don't like it or if you think it's worth the price that they have set um, so I definitely would recommend doing that before you place an order you can also if you have art friends ask them where they get things made I will say I would only ask people that you're actually friends with um, because it can come off like kind of rude when like someone just asks like where do you get things made because it kind of makes you feel used. I also think that everybody has different I guess quality standards like for me like I personally really like thick stickers and I found that the thickest stickers I can find are like made through vinyl disorder. So I usually get die cut stickers made through vinyl disorder because I really love their quality. But I also really love Sticker Ninja because they they can print, actually they are the only company that I know of that will print your RGB files and they print their colors beautifully. So after you pick a manufacturer and you feel good about you know moving forward with somebody, all you have to do is send your CMYK image and upload it to their website, whatever, and just order it through them. And usually it takes about two weeks at least to get sticker sheets or stickers sent back to you from a manufacturer. So also keep that in mind. Okay, so now that that's kind of out of the way, the, I guess, more simple like manufacturing that you can do. Now on to the next topic, which is overseas manufacturers. So I'm sure there's other manufacturers that you can go to overseas perhaps, or even in America, that you can get these specific things made. But for me personally, I've only used um, overseas manufacturers through the app Alibaba, or I think it's also a website. Um, and on there, you'll find thousands probably of manufacturers who can make all kinds of different things. So you can get things like washi tape, plushies, memo pads, stickers. You can, I mean, you can get pretty much anything made through them. I think it can be really overwhelming when you first get on the website because you're just like, what do I even do? So now I'm just gonna kind of go into the process of how I got my plushes made, but you can also use this as reference on how to get other things made, um, like stickers, not just plushes, but like finding any kind of manufacturer, I guess, through Alibaba. So I'm just gonna kind of start off how I went about getting my plushies made. So like the first step, you know, make your account, make sure your email's attached to it because I just recently found out that my regular email wasn't attached to it. So now I'm in this big mess. Anyways, and so at first went on the search bar and I searched custom plush. And of course all of these different results will come up and you're kind of like, okay, what do I pick? And so I kind of just went through a lot of the different results and first thing I, or the things that I would look for was the reviews um, and how long they've been in business. And then they usually, you know, have pictures of different kinds of things that they can do. And I kind of would just look through the pictures to see if the idea I had like was represented, I guess, in any of the images to see if it was possible. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is message them and then have some questions ready to ask them. So the things that you really want to know is the MOQ, which is the minimum order quantity. 
And so this is really important for a lot of people like me who don't have like these giant businesses who can't order like thousands of plushes or something like that. You know, like I only needed like, I don't know, like 50 or 100 of, you know, certain items, whatever it was. For example, when I got my plushies made, I asked, okay, what is your MOQ for custom plushes? And a lot of the times they will ask you to send the design first so that they can gauge like what exactly you're asking for like what's like more i guess specific details of what they're gonna have to do to make your plush or whatever product it is that you're making and then after you send them the sample image of whatever it is then they'll get back to you and say i don't know maybe for for 50 of these or 100 of these it'll cost x amount per item and of course the more items the cheaper it is but you don't always need like 10,000 erasers you know what I mean so from there I usually will see if their MOQ is too high for me or if the cost overall is still gonna be too high um, sometimes the MOQ cost changes with customized items so you always want to ask the MOQ for customized of whatever it is that they're showing in the product just so that they understand that you're asking for a customized item like it's not gonna be their stock thing whatever it is that they are are showing in the pictures so once you kind of talk through all that and see kind of what they're about and you're happy with the price and the MOQ and everything then I would highly recommend ordering samples from them they are not cheap but it is worth your money to do so because you could be wasting a lot of money if you order a hundred sticker sheets or whatever from a company and they get to you and you don't like the quality of the sticker sheets or whatever it is that you ordered. So I would highly recommend ordering samples, especially of sticker sheets and memo pads, washi tape, all that stuff. You really want to know the quality of what you're getting. Whenever I've ordered samples from certain companies, some of them will have you pay just for the shipping costs and then some will have you pay like a little bit extra plus the shipping costs but shipping is not cheap. I think it's probably, for a lot of companies, it's like $20 at least in shipping or more. So yeah, shipping isn't cheap from China, just so you know. Also a side note to be aware of is that they are obviously in a very different time zone than we are, depending on where you live, I guess. So for me, I had to stay up late a lot of times to talk to a manufacturer. I would usually start talking to them around eight o'clock at night and sometimes they, I would be talking to them until like two in the morning, trying to go back and forth. Usually most that I've noticed, they don't respond immediately. So you're waiting sometimes hours between different responses. Sometimes, you know, it's like 30 minutes, sometimes they're quicker, but for the most part you're like waiting. And then most of the time all throughout the day, they're not responding to you because they're of course sleeping. <laughs> um, so that's like another thing to, Take into account when you're working on deadlines, um, things usually aren't super fast because it's just different time zone, there's a lot of stuff going on also, you're not their only customer. And then after you go through um, placing your order through the manufacturer, it'll probably be a few days and they'll send you proofs of the images that you want to be printed out or the sticker sheets or whatever, and you'll have to approve it and then they'll actually start the production and then you can expect those sticker sheets to be ready probably in about two to three weeks, maybe. So it'll take a while. So you have to plan ahead. So now specifically getting into getting my plushies made, the only difference I guess in the that little process that I just explained is that you don't necessarily need to order samples from the company, like, you know, have them shipped to you like a plush, I guess, that they already made. They will, you're paying for them at first to make the sample plush. So be prepared to pay a lot of money because the samples are not cheap. They are over $100 for each sample because they are making you like a custom plush sample so that they can send it to you and see if you like it. So that's why it's like really important to make sure that you give a lot of input to them so that you're getting something that, you know, you just paid a lot of money for in a sample because you're also gonna wanna be ordering more of these, hopefully, like if you're doing pre-orders or something like that, so other people can, um, so you can have the plush made for other people as well. So Busybug was my first plush that I was having made. So I've sent them, of course, the pictures of Busybug at first and they started the production. And then after a few days, they sent me the first sample, which was this. Yeah, and I wasn't super happy about it, um, but of course, the first sample is never going to be how you want it, probably for the, I mean, I don't think it probably is ever exactly how you want it during the first try. 
And that's fine because you can send them edits and things you want to change. Some of them do have limits on how many times you can edit the plush. Sometimes you have to pay extra if you want more changes to it after like the allotted amount of edits that you can make or give to them. What I did so that I could try to be very specific in telling them what I wanted to changed um, in the plush. Um, I would save the picture that they sent me and open it up on Procreate and I would literally just like draw and write out the things that I didn't like about it or that I wanted changed so that at least they would have like a more clear idea of what I wanted fixed in the image. I think that helped them to at least understand better of like what exactly I wanted them to fix or that I didn't like about the sample that they were showing me. But in regards to Busybug, it was very difficult because I actually mid way of making this plush. I actually really started to feel like the manufacturer I was using wasn't at all seeing the vision that I was having for Busybug. And every time they would make an edit, I was feeling, I guess, more discouraged because it just was not at all what I was asking. All of the edits I was asking for, they weren't applying that to the plush sample. And so I just really felt like maybe they just can't do what I'm asking and it was kind of like this whole process and it kind of got kind of rough and of course you know we have we have to consider that there is a, a language barrier so I try not to take things personally because sometimes they word things where I'm just like wait a minute that kind of hurt my feelings um because sometimes I would ask for changes and they would kind of get upset at me for asking for changes and I was like wait but I'm paying for this I'm confused but it kind of it got to the point in the process of with working with this manufacturer and it just wasn't getting anywhere. And so I decided that I didn't want to work with them anymore. And it really sucked because I actually did lose money. So yeah, I was like super bummed because I was like, man, I'm, I'm probably not gonna be able to make her then like, and I just wasted all this money. But luckily I found another manufacturer pretty much right after. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try this one more time and we'll see how it goes. And I try to be a little bit more specific this time around on the shape of Busy Bug and how I wanted her to look. And this was the first sample that they sent me. And I was like, okay, looks freaky, but the shape is closer to what I had imagined in my head when I first thought of making her into a plush. From there, we just went on and I made a few edits and eventually Busy Bug was finished and now we have Busy Bug made. And I really wanted Busy Bug to have like the beaded eyes. I always grew up with Hello Kitty dolls and this is like a Hello Kitty plush that I just have. A lot of the, my favorite Hello Kitty dolls had the beaded eyes and noses and those were my favorite kind. So I really wanted to make Busy Bug with the beaded eyes. So then I was like, cool, awesome, Busy Bug's finished, yay. But then I was like, oh, I also wanna get this other character made, Clementine. And so then I started the whole process again and started making Clementine. And Clementine was, I think, a little bit more difficult somehow. There was a few moments where I was like a little scared about how Clementine was coming out because I wasn't super happy with like the way that they were kind of interpreting my edits, I guess. So first they sent me this sample of Clementine and I was like, oh no, that's like not at all what I want. Like. Ooh. And so they did a lot of edits and then I sent them uh, pictures of other plush dolls that I thought I kind of want them to resemble resemble like this shape. I sent them some pictures of, of like different Hello Kitty dolls and stuff like that and just asked like what was possible, what wasn't, what wasn't possible. And so yeah, you always just, I think it's helpful to send them pictures of other plushes that you want to, that you like the shape of them or the fabric that they have so that they can, they can have a better idea of what you're asking for. So I try to guide them a little bit better um, by sending other pictures and I still feel like it wasn't necessarily coming across like how I wanted. The problem with Clementine is that, so they created one more like sample plush idea and I was like, yes, like that looks really good to me. Like, can you make that into a plush? So they were like, okay, yeah, cool. And then a few days later, they sent me the updated sample and I was like, that looks different than what I asked for. And then they also changed like the fabric of the leaf and they like they had made some changes that I didn't ask for. Um, I was kind of like, uh, that's not what I asked for. Like, and so they s switched those different things. But then I still just wasn't fully happy with her face. Am I the problem? There was just something about her face that I just didn't like. Um, and I was like, okay, fine. Like, and they were like, but we'll still send you the plush. So they sent me the finished plush of Clementine. Even though I'm not like 100% happy with it, I'm still kind of like, when I saw it in person, I was like, maybe it's not as bad as I think. 
and she does look close to like, you know, Clementine. I think especially to like when I posted pictures of them on Instagram, a lot of people really liked how she looked. And so I was kind of like, well, like maybe, maybe she really is okay. So after all of that, I don't know how like actually great that was at sharing, but I mean, honestly, a lot of the process is just going back and forth and communicating with them, adding your edits until you get a design that you like. I am happy with how they came out and I think other people really like them. I'm kind of nervous about doing um, pre-orders because I don't know if I'll hit even the MOQ. I think the lowest order amount is like 50 each of these plushes. So then once I do pre-orders, let's say I'm just doing 50 of each plush, then I'll tell them like, okay, can I have 50 of each plush? Then they'll be like, okay, they'll send me the amount and all that stuff, whatever. And that process I've heard can take months, like two, three months for them to make all the plushes. Um, I've also heard that shipping is can be crazy expensive. So for plushes, you, as you can probably imagine, they cost a lot of money to ship overseas. So that's also something you need to take into account when you're setting your price for your plushes. So you can ask them after, after they make the samples, you can ask them what's the cost per plush for each design so that you can know um, at least the like base I guess. So I asked like what's the cost per plush for um, 50 MOQ of each. So you also want to include that into the price and then also having to package them and then ship them to other people. Um, I would probably think that these costs maybe like five to seven dollars to ship maybe. I'm not positive. <sighs> so yeah that was the whole process. I guess we'll see um, if there's enough interest in these two. I'll do a pre-order soon. They are ready for pre-order. Hi. So I finally decided on a pre-order date and it's going to be on January 21st of 2023, which is in like two-ish weeks, I think. At least as of recording right now. So Busybug and Clementine will be available on January 21st for pre-order. I'm really trying to reach a goal of 50 plushes. So please help me bring all of these plushies home. I hope one of these or both of Clementine or Busybug can be nice additions to your homes, to your offices, your kids' rooms, whatever you can think of. But pre-orders will start on January 21st. It'll still be on my Shopify and it'll be like, I found this little app that I could add on Shopify where you can like, we can all see the goal and like reach it together. I'm gonna make it go for maybe like a month-ish, depending on how long it takes to like reach or get as close as I can to the 50 plushes. So I'm really hoping to meet the 50 minimum requirement and they will take maybe a few months to be manufactured and then sent to me, so be aware of that. But I mean, I think they will be worth waiting for because just look how cute they are. So hopefully if we meet the goal, then we'll get all the plushes and all that stuff shipped over to me and then I'll probably make maybe a part two of this like manufacturing video. For sure I'm gonna make a video about getting all the plushes sent to me and packing them and all that stuff. So I am gonna make a post soon on Instagram. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment them and maybe I'll make like a follow-up video or something like that. I really tried my best to be as like concise and cohesive as I could. I hope it gave like a basic idea of how manufacturing works and like the little things I guess that come along with it. If you would like to support me outside of YouTube and my shop, you can support me on Patreon. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff and I think I already talked about it in the video. I'll put this month's rewards right here if you want to see it. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you'll have a good rest of your week and yeah, I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.